Today we have games. So I went to the local, could say dollar shop, it's Euro shop here in Germany, um, and bought a few games and these were especially cheap. I paid three euros and some cents for these. They are 55 cents each, which is about 60 cents in US cents. And um, yeah, there are quite some interesting games uh, here. This one, for example, Mobius or Mobius. Empire Rising is by Jane Jensen, who is especially famous for the Sierra series of Gabriel Knight and Grey Matter. I just listened to the audiobook um, of the Sierra founder and he mentioned Jane Jensen in, in there. And uh, I actually have Gabriel Knight as the game, his original game. Yeah, so this looks interesting and it has all the German stuff in. So, so these are sealed. These are new games which are all 55 cents. So let's just for now go through them. These are this this is a new game by the Runway um, guys. Runway is uh, or was a adventure trilogy, point and click adventure trilogy. So this is also 55. All these are 55. Um, it's called the case John yesterday and it features is a limited edition with a soundtrack a poster and a ringtone as an mp3 Ooh, fancy and it's a mystery adventure and it's from from 2012 so this is 11 years old this is from 2014 yeah so this is nine years old and you need a Windows XP or Vista machine a you know, Windows 7 machine and for this one you need doesn't say but you need a PC with a DVD ROM then we have Demonicon and um, this is mm, a bla it's called Das Schwarze Auge which is pretty much the German Dungeons and Dragons so this does look a bit like a turn-based game but I'm not entirely sure and this one is from 2013, so this is a 10 year old game. Interesting. Then we have Omerta, City of Gangsters, Gold Edition. You have to play this game, it says here. And it's Best of E3 2012. So this is, I assume, from 2013 or 2014. And this looks a bit like. Uh, I don't know, Syndicate on the Amiga or a mix of GTA and whatever. Then we have Rise of Venice Gold Edition. And this contains Rise of Venice, um, Expansion Beyond the Sea, all DLCs and updates as download. Rise of Venice Gold Edition, Ships and Sea Monsters from 2014. Okay, so this looks exactly like a turn-based game, like the Settlers or don't know what else there is. And finally we have Battle Worlds Kronos, which looks to be a sci-fi game. And it says it's in the style of Battle Isle, which was very popular, if I remember correctly, on the Amiga. And it looks a bit like Command and Conquer and all that stuff. So this also is a PC game. Oh, it also runs on a Mac and Linux. Oh, that's nice. And it's from 2013, so 10 year old game. So I bought six, nine to 11 old, uh, years old games um, for a grand total of three euros and 30 cents. Let's uh, unpack these, take a look inside and then maybe even play them. By the way, I looked all of these games up 
uh, on Amazon and they are much more expensive between 5 and 15 euros each Ooh, that's actually a lot of stuff here so we have some kind of map or poster the rise of Venice let me get up to show you now. here we have a map Reminds me a little bit on the Ultima maps, but these were actually cloth maps, and this is just some cheap paper map. But it's the effort, right? The fat manual. I like it. It's one DVD. So that is Rise of Venice. Next up, we have Omerta. There's actually a book by. Mario Puzo, the author of The Godfather, which is called Omerta. Nice book. Oh, and here we have exclusive free item package code and we have the product key for, I assume, Steam. I don't know. Yeah, that is more in the line of modern games, or modernish games, which are not download, but or download only but come in a box um, and you have to download them on Steam. Let's continu continue with Demonicon. So we have one disc and one paper manual, so no download, which I really like. Okay, next we have Mybius, which I'm really looking forward to because it's by Jane Jensen and it says it's an interesting story and I like adventures. Always stay observant. Okay, we'll do. Oh, that looks different. A metaphysical thriller by Jane Jensen. This, this was a Kickstarter, by the way. This was kickstarted and it uh, cost $400,000 to produce this game, according to Jane Jensen. 400K is not much for a game. When I had my game company in 2000. One, we spent more money on a game, on an adventure game. Installation. So this is indeed a disc-based game. Not much to see here. And then we have Kronos. So the cashier in the dollar store or euro store um, was looking at me buying all these games and she said, great deal, right? I said, yeah, it's a great, great deal, but it's, um, I'm a bit sorry for the game designers who had to create these games and now they are selling them for 55 cents. So I can totally see that. Okay, there's a very compact manual. Okay. And it's multi-platform, which I really like. And grand finale, the case John yesterday from the Runaway team. And this should have a soundtrack, a poster, and a ringtone. Pendulo Studios. Oh, okay. So here's the soundtrack. Here's the game. Very compact manual. Okay, poster is a big word for this. But I guess technically it is a poster. It's just not a big poster. Yeah, nice. So let's head over to the uh, machine and let's take a look at these games. Let's start with Battle Worlds Kronos, which was a Kickstarter campaign. I have this open right here. Uh, yeah. And this actually brought in $260,235 in, I think, 2018, but that can't be true. Should be 20, no, it's 2013 or 2012. And uh, this game was actually made in Germany. Interesting. Okay, so this is by King Art Games. And these guys, if I remember correctly, did quite a few games. So this is based on the Battle Isle idea of games with these uh, hexagon-shaped 
uh, fields where you can move uh, your troops. And it got a Metacritic score of 71 and a user score of 7.1. People of Kronos, people of Rudia, we are just moments away from what may be the demise of the free people of Kronos. People from all houses who have created something great together. How did we manage it? By making a choice. We didn't want to hate and despise each other any longer. There was room enough for everyone. You can choose what kind of a world you want to live in. Join us. Don't fight for slavery. Fight for freedom. It's your choice. Yeah, that looked actually interesting. So if you like games like uh, Battle Isle and Command and Conquer and stuff like that, that might be for you. And uh, actually, I do like these a lot. So yeah, it looks interesting. The cutscene graphic style may not be up on par with what's uh, current gen graphics, but still looks good. So Battle Worlds Kronos, I think I will definitely uh, install and try out. Next up we have Omerta City of Gangsters and um, yeah that's some kind of mafia game and some uh, we have a meta meta score of 54 and a user score of 4.9 and uh, I think if I remember correctly this was a game which said you have to play this um, and it says here the price of this game should be around 20 it does not justify more than that but I don't think anyone came here to wonder about prices yeah maybe not um, nothing very good here from the poor management of your crew to the repetitiveness of the missions and maps the very disappointing combat system the story not very appealing you are doing the same thing over and over the worse and worse it's not even fun no, that doesn't sound too good yeah there's some 84 on the other hand which uh, says what struck me most was the potential <laughs> okay <laughs> nice <laughs> It's another way of saying it's a shitty game, but could have been better. Omerta is a good game, but if it succeeds, it has the potential to be a great game. At opposing AI gangs and allow for turf wars to occur. Okay, here's someone who reviews a game that's not even there, but what he wishes was there. So, yeah, yeah. Let's let's take a peek at what it really like. What it's really like. Peggy twelve. Okay, that's a lot of uh, cutscene graphics. Ah, there's some gameplay. Thank you. 
Yeah, that did not catch me at all, I have to say. So the graphics, I don't like the graphics style. And um, it looked like a mix of this Jurassic World game where you have to build your own park, which I really like. But uh, then you have this uh, shooting around and I don't find that very appealing. So yeah, not my type of game, I think. So I will skip that. Next up, we have the Dark Eye Demonicon. Metascore 61, user score 6.5. Um, let's see what people say. So we have Mr. Cash. Demonicon is a game with a lot of heart built on a solid, well-balanced combat system. The creators crafted a compelling narrative filled with interesting characters. Technical aspects do mar the vision, but the strength of the narrative and gameplay rise above these problems. Portal to Hell writes, for me this is a good game with a good storyline. Not enough weapons, armor, so, so pumping. Graphics average, beautiful in, in the game, only the plot. It makes the game playful and interesting. So this pretty much sounds like a game which is very story driven and the best of course is the story and not the game. So we'll take a look at the trailer in a moment. In times of Witcher, the or the Dark Souls, this is hard to, be, to bear. The dialogue is below daily soap standard. The fighting system, as superficial as any visuals, are outdated. This is gruesome. Okay, and on t in 2013, so I don't want to see it now. But um, there's a huge fan base for um, the Dark Eye or the Schwarze Auge, as we call it in Germany. So I think this game will have sold pretty well. I'm not sure, but I assume. Yeah, so let's take a peek. Almost 20 winters have passed since Borbrad covered East Aventuria with a pall of undeath and corruption. <laughs> it was at the wall of death that Borbrad fell. The demon crown, symbol of his dominion, burst under the god's blade's seventh stroke. Out of the ruins of his empire arose the cursed Shadowlands. Terrible warlords fought for power, bringing fates far worse than mere death upon those living there. Sounds a bit like uh, sounds a bit like uh, Lord of the Rings, it's Sauron. Did you really think that I aye, never aye. noticed the way you sometimes look at your sister? Okay, graphics are outdated. Agreed. You don't know what you're doing, Calandra! Jeez. You think you'll get away with it? You are wrong! Well, the cutscenes are actually not so bad. The game looks interesting enough. Chiron, we must not fail. Yeah, better not fail. Available now for fifty five cents. So let's head over to the next game, with, which is Möbius Empire Rising. And this has a meta score of 54 and a user score of 6.1. And we have US Gamer. Personally, after enjoying this installment immensely, I'm very much looking forward to seeing what's next and sincerely hope that between this title and the impending Gabriel Knight remake that we can well and truly see Jensen getting back to doing what she does best on a most regular basis. So that is the fanboy. Excellent story and love the characters, especially David. Hoping for a sequel quickly very much feels like 
a new Gabriel Knight series for the two tens. And on the other end, as someone who has loved all Gabriel Knight games and even enjoyed Grey Matter quite a bit, I figured Jane would be able to handle who herself and so I supported this with more way than any other game. So uh, not impressed, not impressed at all. Let's take a peek. I'd like to hire you for a security job, if you're interested. Ooh, that looks like... That depends on what I'd be securing. 1990. Ooh, that's very uh, retro, but not in a good way. What's your business? I appraise antiques. I had no idea the antiques business was dangerous. When there are millions of dollars involved, it's always dangerous. Voice acting sounds good. gathered around the crater. What crater? Uh, it's just a hole in the ground. Doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, yeah, interesting, I think. Rise of Venice. 66 Metascore, 7.0 User Score. There are games that make you smile and those that make you cry. Terrible graphics, terrible strategies, terrible waters. Just terrible. A simple woeful game. Okay. It's a good solid game in the Patrician and Port Royal tradition, sort of a cross of both. I'm keener on the trade side of things and, and not the pirate battle stuff, which I get sick of pretty quick. I find the map a little hard to see. Overall, it's a solid trading game. So, If you never tried Port Royal or Patrician, you are looking to explore a truly engaging period piece that will provide hours of entertainment. Take Rise of Venice for a spin. Let's see. It may contain appropriate uh, content inappropriate for children. Sounds good. Bring it on. Oh, it's actually from the Port Royal Patrician series makers. Venice. In the east, the mighty Ottoman Empire stretches its fingers out towards the last vestiges of the Roman Empire. Moreover, the pirates of the Mediterranean have lately grown from a small annoyance into a huge problem. Grandfather's last wish was that you become a trader, so to lead our family to prestige and wealth. Rise of Venice. Yeah, there's not much to see of the actual game here. Some battles and very few mechanic of the trade side of things. And finally we have Yesterday and that has a meta score of 65 and a user score of 6.9. What do they say? Once again a great adventure game from Pendulo, but this one is darker in tone and story. 
This game had me hooked from the get-go, throwing me straight into a world with interesting multifaceted characters and mystery, and mystery to solve and beautiful hand-drawn backgrounds. Okay, I liked the game. It's a modern point-and-click adventure game with a thrilling story, interesting main characters and good twist. I love Pandula Studios for making Runaway 3 a twist of fate and the next big thing. They are absolutely great games, but yesterday is a bitter disappointment. I really don't know what they were thinking when they made this. Usually Pandula games are joyful and charming games with funny characters. The characters in this game are all boring and weak, especially the dialogues. Uh, so, okay. So here's someone who liked the classic fun runaway games or runaway games and now is faced with a dark adventure and he doesn't like it or she let's take a look good to know gaming lives yeah and in color is pretty much Pinocchio animation. Torture, Satan, all the good stuff. Okay. I don't get it. Shouldn't the trailer introduce you to the story or something? This is going to be fun. Nope, it's not. Okay, so that was the final game in the set, which is yesterday. Yeah, so these are the six games I bought for three euros. Next time I have something even better, which is, I think, eight games which I paid 30 cents for. And uh, yeah, if you like these games or one of these games, let me know in the comments. If you played one of these games, please comment below and let us know. And if you want to see more of these cheapo games from the early 2000s, also write in the comment. And uh, I'll tell you until next time. Until until next time. See you. Bye bye. Thank you for watching. Retro is the new black. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. If you like the video, please share. Every like, share, and comment helps a lot. Until next time. Bye bye.